Peter and I have our own individual practices, but over the last year or two, we've come together and made installations. And this work, Alone with the Gods, is one of those works that we've made together. And it really is a collaborative project. So what we try to do, I guess, with our collaborations is sort of push each other's practices sort of along slightly different lines uh, mm -hmm. from what we might otherwise do individually. So it's almost like we sort of collaboratively curate each other. Mm. And I encourage Peter to do things that he might not normally do, and he does the same for me. We're really interested in this idea of trying to sort of get outside of the individual sculptures and create a sort of larger narrative space that they kind of both, I guess, construct and inhabit. Alone with the Gods is about a group of people, survivalist type people, that have secluded themselves away. They have a different way of seeing the world. So it's sort of about this kind of attempt to create this completely closed kind of closed system where they can live and develop their own kind of ecologies and mm. um, it's sort of a metaphor I guess for the way that we interact with with the with the world and the environment and stuff mm. um, and so they have this leader who's kind of like a pusher he wants to push science he wants to push the body he wants to push his vision and he does he does a great thing he makes his body give birth and he gives birth to a girl, a daughter. She's a great creator and she creates these life forms, these beings that have no boundaries between them and animals and even things. So for both of us, um, a lot of our work in the past has been very much about playing with the idea of the dissolution of boundaries. In this piece we're really looking at um, taking that even further and creating this world where things are built out of a kind of amorphous sort of intermingling of, of things and animals and people and minerals and vegetables and objects and mm -hmm. so the sort of space is this giant experiment and, mm. and what we come into as a viewer is the, the leftovers of this experiment. The people have gone and all that's left are these strange kind of objects and experiments that are sort of hard to, to categorise. But the world that we're sort of building is not a sort of direct uh, expression of this idea. It's a very much more metaphorical kind of magical, alchemical sort of uh, play with these ideas. So we're not looking at a sort of science lab. We're looking at something that's much more kind of organic. Mm. And in many ways, the two figures that are discussed in the narrative, the, the big guy who's sort of empty, sort of husky, we see sort of on a wall as we enter and, the, and the, the daughter, the girl who's sort of responsible for the other things in the space, are very much metaphors for two different ways of understanding how we might kind of intervene in nature. One which is very much about pushing nature in a certain direction and the other which is I guess more kind of organic and collaborative. And just letting it happen. Yeah, I guess it's about creating a kind of experience which puts you into a, a questioning mode. Um, mm. a sort of, there's enough uh, information there if you really look to sort of tease out the details of this narrative or else you could just move through it and be kind of left wondering. Mm. And there's a, a video in the work where, where there's uh, one of the um, survivalist type the last remaining the last member. remaining one um, he's talking about what's happened and we have his first-hand experience and if, if people really want to understand the work they'll listen to him and 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 get a sense of how he sees the world now in the installation there are a few characters there's the dancer and she's interesting because she looks up at the viewer and not only has she got a very um, human um, sense to her, um, but she's obviously an animal. She's a simian um, creature. And she's also a shoe, a dancing shoe. Um, and so this isn't obvious when you first see the work, is it? And you no. sort of have to, it looks just like a creature, but as yeah, you move around, around it and it see it from the other side, you realise her back is... A shoe. A shoe. And 
it, it shouldn't make sense, but because she's there and present and in sculptural form, it, it does. It's just, how, how could that be? And then there's the other work with, with the helmet, and, um, which is a bicycle helmet, and it's got these growths coming out and this beautiful hair and this sort of bulging stomach. And we realised that it, it's, it's, it makes sense, but, but it's just... It, it, in the recent past it was inconceivable, but now we can imagine it. I guess in some ways these are some of the more surreal kind of directions that your work has taken in the last few years, less yeah. sort of directly rational references to specific events and more about to, to the kind of ideas or the, the magical sort of, not magical, sort of, the sort of, yeah, surreal possibilities that, that flow out from these mm. sort of fairy tales or something for the modern world. And I don't see um, our installation as kind of... Scary? Uh, spooky? Uh, a dystopia. No. Dystopic. I, I, I see it as a kind of strange family. Mm. It's a strange, strange family. Yeah. A bit unconventional, probably have, ha has a few... Um, uh, issues? Issues. <laughs> um, but it's family and mm. they've created something new and kind of wondrous. Yeah. Yeah, like I wouldn't make these works. I don't think you would no. if you didn't see a kind of beauty there's in them. There's definitely a beauty in it. Yeah. There's a darkness sure. and a sort sure. of gooiness, but there's Absolutely. a beauty in that. But for me, it's a beautiful space and mm. it's a wondrous space and it's a, a space of possibility. Mm. And we rarely see that or have that opportunity in our everyday lives. Um, and so it's, it's almost important that we have that in this artwork. 